Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz. The 2019 campaign is in the books for the Wenatchee Apple Sox, their 20th season of collegiate baseball here in the Wenatchee Valley. A good year. They made it back to the playoffs for the first time since 2013. Gave uh, Kelowna all they could handle in the first round of the playoffs. Weren't able to advance to the championship. But when you finish as one of the four best teams in a very competitive league, it's a good year. And to put a wrap on the Apple Sox season, make his very first appearance. I'll wake up in Angie Valley. Please welcome the voice of the Apple Sox, Storman, Joel Norman. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah, I wish there was a baseball game tonight, but other than that, yeah, yeah pretty good. Yeah. yeah, Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we get into the meat and potatoes of what was a very good Apple Sox year, what's going on with your Pirates, buddy? Well, they're just, you know, what's going on there? I think they got too much time off with the All Star break. <laughs> only, only what, five or six, seven wins since yeah, then? Yeah, since the. You know, early I just July. like to pretend we're still at the All Star break and the Pirates <laughs> are two games out of first place, but. That was then. This is now. Joel is delusional. In case you didn't know that, it's hey. We all have we all have our favorite baseball. Well, most of us have our favorite baseball team. Mm -hmm. um, and you're you're with them, win or lose, exactly. one way or the other. Exactly. And, and you're a Pittsburgh Pirate fan, and and it's been been a tough year for you guys. Yes, it has. Yeah. But it's kind of been that way since '15. So yeah, I'm at the point. I just want the team to sell. I think there's there's too many fan bases. I think especially in baseball in this country, kind of hope that their owner would sell their team. Yeah. <laughs> and so. you think you think they need to get rid of that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a beautiful ballpark. It is. And yeah. that's the thing. Selling the team wouldn't mean they'd leave. I just no. think you know they need someone who's more committed to winning. Yeah. They're so. not. They're not leaving Pittsburgh. Not no. That. That's a that's a jewel of a stadium. It really is. Um, good year. Good year. It's you got to do more baseball this year than you did last year, and that's always Absolutely. good. Absolutely. The yeah. more games, the better. That's right. what I always say. Exactly. You know, when the season ends, I'm never really ready to stop. I'm always mm -hmm. kind of like, ah, you know, I'd love give me another week, give me another couple games, or something. Right. give me a doubleheader. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, we didn't have to do any this year doubleheaders. But no, it was a really fun year. You know, this was a really been the 20th season right from the get go. Coaching, management, myself, we all said it's the 20th season. Why not make some more history while we celebrate our rich history and making the postseason was a big step forward. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a town, a fan base that is very accustomed to winning. And for us to get back to that point, at least taking this step toward getting that sixth championship, that's gigantic for us. And I think we're we're really proud of the effort, but we're looking for more next season. It's ironic that the four teams that made the playoffs, um, Wenatchee, Kelowna, um, Corvallis, and Walla Walla, are, were, I think, clearly the four best teams. I think so, league. too. The, yeah. the wheat was separated from the chaff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think you could have looked at any four of those teams and you could have said they were the best team this year. They had some good stuff. But, you know, it just there was a lot of great competition. You know, we go up against great Victoria squad who scored, you know, set so many offensive records this season. We yeah. knew it was going to be tough to score. And we'd lost some, off, some bats, but they, you, know, you tip your cap to them. That was a great team all year long. They beat us five of six times, mm -hmm. so you knew they were legit. We knew it was going to be tough. You know, to be that close was remarkable. I mean, we, we were thrilled to be there, but obviously no one's thrilled or satisfied with losing in that fashion. How did the team handle the, the, that third game loss, losing that, uh, that lead in the ninth inning and, and realizing they're going to they're going to go home and their their season is over and it's time to it's time to put a wrap on it. What was the what was the mentality of the team in the clubhouse after that that tough loss in game 3 against uh, Victoria? You know, I chatted with uh, coach Carstangelo and our coaching staff and I said, you know, well, ex that same question. I was like, "Well, how'd they feel?" Because it, it looked from up high from behind home plate, it looked like they were down. And but a lot of those guys were people who had only been with the team for maybe a little over a week. So I was kind of wondering how upset can some of them be? And I totally would understand if they weren't that upset. Mm -hmm. But Kyle told me that he said to them, he said, you know, the fact that I can look at all your faces and actually be able to tell that you're disappointed tells me a lot about you guys as ball players and your commitment to the team. So the way they continue to gel, even as so many of our core pieces, so many of ours, we call them day one players from like June 3rd when the season began, the fact that so many of those guys were gone, new ones were coming in, and the, re the returning members who'd been there since the beginning of the year were still able to get them to gel. That said so much, I think, about the chemistry of this team and why they got as close as they did to get into the championship series. How many June 3rders made it to uh, August 15th? Two. Two. Yeah. That was it. Which Gavin Gurrell like and Brett Gillis. Five games, something like that, 56 games all together. I think so, 54, if I'm not 54. mistaken. That's right. not including non-league games. Right. But, um, yeah, it was, those were the, those were the, uh, Brett Gillis, Gavin Gurrell, and, you know, not, I, ironically, you know, they both had a key part in that final game. Gillis hit a sack fly in the ninth inning. Of course, he was on the mound for the loss, but he was sure. phenomenal all year to that point on the mound. Gavin Gurrell got the start, went six strong innings for us. So those two were big contributors all year. 
And it just means a ton to a coaching staff to have someone make that commitment. They're there day one, and then they're there when the season finishes. Sometimes it's not out of the players, in the players' control, but nonetheless, when it does happen, it just means the world to a coaching staff. And it's not just an Apple Sox thing. All of the teams Absolutely. in the West Coast League have wild fluctuations in their roster, especially two times at the very beginning of the season when a lot of the guys aren't done with college baseball yet, and they kind of filter into the Valley over the first two weeks of the season, mm -hmm. and at the very end, because they got to go back to school. So it's not just endemic of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, but it seemed this team this year had more roster turnover than any of the it other did. teams. It really did. We, we were hit hard. And some of it was injury. You know, some guy like Blake Klassen, incoming freshman at Arizona, he was supposed to be here till the end. Mm -hmm. He wasn't able to be. And we can't control that. There's a lot of guys, though, who end up having to get shut down earlier. And our coaching staff said there were some who they thought they were going to have them all year, so maybe performed a little better than their coaches at school thought, and thus were pulled out earlier and thought, you know, maybe they're going to get more usage at school in fall ball or something. So... It's tough. At the end, I always say, at the end of the day, the Apple Sox and every team in this league are at the mercy of the head coaches. And like mm -hmm. you said, it wasn't just Wenatchee. Victoria was a team we knew coming in. They were down a few good hitters. However, most of their big bats were still there. But it is pretty remarkable when a team has two all-star catchers and neither of them are with them for the postseason yeah. run. <laughs> but, you know, the thing that Victoria was lacking in was pitching. And I thought the Apple Sox exploited that. But they just couldn't do enough offensively, so to say. Mm -hmm. You look at game two, no hits till the sixth inning. You're not going to win many games that yeah. way. And as Kyle mentioned, uh, Coach Crutch Angel, when we talked to him a couple of times during the playoffs, um, you get whatever player you can at that yeah. point, and you put them where you can. You can't necessarily go out and say, okay, I need a shortstop. You're going to get anybody you can, Absolutely. fit them into the batting lineup, and say, okay, well, today you're playing first base, even though I got – Yeah. That, I mean, it, it's not just bringing in new players. It's, it's finding a spot for the new player. You know, the, the ninth, eighth and ninth innings of uh, Game 3 against Victoria reminded me a lot of some of the games we did on the NCW Life Channel this yeah. spring where, you know, the right fielder's coming in to pitch or the pitcher's going to third after and third's going to pitch. It's just, it was that kind of way. The rosters were thin. You get whoever you can, you say, all right, have you played here recently? <laughs> and then if that's a faint yes at all, they're in there. And <laughs> you do what you can. Does the club help pay uh, for Kyle's cell phone bill? I mean... <laughs> He was that thing was glued to his ear. Maybe he was doing Wi-Fi calling. We'll have to okay. double check. I know you have that setting on the iPhone, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> you know, yeah, he was busy. He yeah. joked that he said, "Wow, I think I spent almost more time recruiting for the Apple Sox than I did at Yakima Valley for the Yaks." And mm -hmm. you know, he was just that busy doing. It. But credit to him, he did a great job getting talent on the field and making sure they performed. Whether it was players he was familiar with from Yakima Valley, or you know, friends of friends, or you know, good connections he made. Kyle pushed all the right buttons, and I know this season meant a lot to him just making the playoffs. He's a guy who isn't satisfied with losing, and we, you know, we came into this off season, entering this season, and it just seemed like there was a little difference in the way he approached because he was kind of like, okay, two years to the helm, I've got a pretty good clue of what to do now. Mm -hmm. However, I haven't done what I wanted. And you could just kind of tell the hunger and the motivation. And there. he admitted that, too. He said, you know, it's a learning curve for mm -hmm. me. It's a learning curve for everybody. He said, there's no question I'm a better coach now than I was when I got the job. Absolutely. And this is a type of ball you have to get used to coaching. It's very different from a lot of the other, the other sports because it's such a short season. It's so condensed. And you don't have full control over your players. Sure, they're contracts. But <clears> at the end of the day, those contracts can come out, can be you know, released because of the coach is saying otherwise. You know, they're coaching at school. They say, okay, never mind. He's, he's done. And there's nothing you can do about that. It's not like it's performance-based. But it's, it's finicky. And in a lot of ways, I compare summer college baseball to minor league ball because in a lot of ways, this is an important step. If you can play in summer ball, you've got a pretty good chance of being able to do well at the minor league level as well. So what do you guys do now? The season's over. Uh, you've cleaned up Paul Town, mm -hmm. the senior field. Yeah. You've packed everything. Now, now what? What's, what's, what? what's the front office doing? What are you and Ken and... Jose and the crew, what are, you, what are you guys doing now? You know, right now, I think a lot of the month of August is kind of reflecting on this past year. We're kind of looking at what can we do a little bit better. We look back at certain nights, you know, you look back at the good, the bad, anything you think you can improve or, you know, tweak at all. And then after that, you know, September, October, we kind of turn our focus ahead maybe to next season. We say, okay, what are some things we want to try out next year? Because, as you know, this year, promotions were a big part of our, our sure. ballpark experience this year. Now it's like, okay, those were nice. How can we continue with that? And, you know, because people, people, there's a standard now. I think maybe sometimes you came to the park this year and maybe you didn't check the schedule, but you were getting handed a bobblehead. You went, Apple Sox handing out a bobblehead? What the heck? So, so now, you know, a standard's been set, and we're trying to meet that and exceed it moving forward. So I think a lot of it now, is, like I said, reflection for this month, and then from there on out, we kind of look toward 2020. Uh, I think maybe it says, uh, speaks very highly of the Apple Sox. Of course, we broadcast four games this year. 
and uh, all the familiar faces were there. It's like a, it's like a big family. But I, you know, there are people who've been going to Applesauce games from oh, yeah. day one who don't miss a game. There, oh yeah, every game I kind of look out from my little por my porch and I kind of look down. I say, okay, he's in his spot. He's yep. there. Oh, so and so is not front row today. You know, it, every, it's pretty much like a ritual for a lot of people. You go to church on Sunday. You go to the Apple Sox games when they're in town, and right. we love that. You know, we love seeing the same faces every night. I think a lot of people enjoy that too. They go and they see their friends who they met because of the Apple Sox. You know, I remember last year, last season at the end. Uh, I stayed with the host family for the year, and I remember them looking down after the final game, and they, they kind of said goodbye to a lot of people, and I was like, how many of these people do they only know because of the Apple Sox? But how cool is that? It is really, really cool. What's Kyle doing? I suppose he's just completely <laughs> anti-baseball, just completely decompressing right now. You know, last I checked, I think I saw a video of him throwing his phone into a lake. Yeah. No, I'm kidding, but he, he's still recruiting, but he's taking some time off, yeah. getting some much-deserved rest. He was telling me after the season, he was, he was bummed it was over. But then a day or two later, he goes, wow, it's going to be nice to get some time off here. Yeah. Because he has a busy season over at Yakima Valley with all the success they've had, their deep postseason runs, and then jumping right into our right season. Right into Apple Sox. And then he's got fall ball. That's turns right. right around and is back at Yakima Valley. Of course, Yakima Valley has a team. We're talking about Yakima Valley. We're talking about Yakima, Yakima Valley Community College, which is Kyle's other coaching job. But of course, Yakima Valley also has a team mm -hmm. in the West Coast League. Does that give Kyle a little extra impetus to beat the Pippins in, in league play when they play each other. Is that our rival now? Is it Walla you know, Walla? Who's our It's who's hard our to say. Rival? It's hard to say. I think, you know, you could argue the Pippins. I think yeah. that's a team both sides, they want to beat each other. Mm -hmm. And both teams swept each other when they yeah. faced each other this year. It's, it's a natural rivalry, really close by. I always, you know, myself, I, I look at those games, I say, oh, these are ones I circle because you know, it's kind of the Apple rivalry in a sure. lot of ways. You know, they claim... Apple's there, we claim as well. Which one of these areas is the, the larger distributor? In a lot of ways, we love to argue about that. But, you know, I, mean, I think it all depends on which flavor of apple you like. Do you like the Pippin, the mm -hmm. green apples, or do you like a red one? Do you like Miners or Dusties, there you know, you when it comes to your hamburger, that, that, <laughs> that kind of deal. Uh, so the season's over. It was a, it was a great year. Um, really, the second half was a tale of, this, this year was a tale of two different teams. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a little while for the team to figure out their roles and to gel, but... Once they gel, they went on a real tear, especially at home. Oh, absolutely. There's yeah. a stretch of 14 straight wins at home, set a franchise record. I mean, I mean, Dan, this team set six or seven different offensive, defensive records overall, too. There's just so many things about this year that were historic, besides being just the 20th season. So many new goals accomplished on the field, you know, set our team record for uh, single season home runs, which is really cool, but we're in that day and age. And sure. it, you see it at the major league level, and don't be surprised when it happens down here too, because a lot of these guys are watching. They're making those similar changes to their swings, but we just we were thrilled with how this year went. You know, making the playoffs was a gigantic goal. No one's happy to just be in it and not mm -hmm. win because we we were devastated with how the season ended. Yeah. However, we re we stepped back a couple days ago and we kind of realized this was gigantic. Making the playoffs, getting back to where we want to be, was huge. So we were really proud of this year. That said, like I mentioned before, we're hungry, and we're not satisfied with just making the playoffs. Next year, the goal, win it all. Why not? We, did it, we made it back this year. Why not go a step further next season? As we mentioned uh, in the, earlier on in the interview, the four best teams in the league made the playoffs. I mean, you have Victoria, mm -hmm. Victoria won their division, both halves. Corvallis won both halves of their divisions. Walla Walla punched their ticket from the south, Wenatchee from the north. They were the, they were the four best teams. Uh, Corvallis walked away with the championship again, their fourth consecutive championship, plus mm -hmm. they have the all-time best record in the history of the West Coast League. Does one team dominating that much over that period of time, is that, is that a good thing, or is that, what are your feelings it's on that? It's a testament to how strong that, that organization is in a lot yeah. of ways. I, I kind of look at it like that. You, if a team's won four years in a row, you can't have the same players every single year. No. So that just goes to the recruiting. You know, they've got a great connection to Oregon State. Oregon State sends a lot of their, most of their players to, that's the only team that gets them in the mm -hmm. WCL. And, you know, when the 2018 national champs are sending theirs to one team, that helps, no doubt. But I give credit to that coaching staff. Brooke Knight is a legend in this league. His 13th year just wrapped up. And this goes to say what Ed Nags has done, obviously, his time at Wenatchee, both of his two years in uh, Corvallis. He's won titles. I mean, we're talking about a guy in Nags who has won eight championships yeah. as a coach. Six with Wenatchee, two with Corvallis. So it, uh, that helps a lot, too. But I, I think they, they have it figured out from a recruiting standpoint. You know, yeah. They build these relationships. They're successful on the field. They, I mean, they, they've been around for 30 seasons for a reason. They've been around longer than us. They, you know, they have a little bit better idea 
and they've just dominated the last decade pretty much. So again, we tip our hat to them because they're a big reason why the WCL has lasted this long and why it even came to be as well. So they're a, a friendly rival in a lot of ways. Yeah. I think when both of these teams were competing at the championship level, it was a great rival, but mm -hmm. it was a respectful rival because you know, they were both they both did things we thought the right way. And it was a fun battle on the field. And from a historical standpoint, I wanted that this year. Because, I mean, with it being the 20th season, writing the book about some of those past battles, sure. this whole year I kept thinking, let's get a Wenatchee Corvallis. It'd be fitting in, you know, memorable years for both of us, their 30th and our 20th. What um, That reminds me, before we, uh, Joel Norman, by the way, is, is my guest, making his very first appearance, by the way, on, on uh, Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. How does the off-season recruiting go for Kyle? Uh, for players who haven't aged out, or I mean, players say, mm -hmm. I'm still going to be eligible to play West Coast League Baseball in 2020 and I'd like to come to Wenatchee. Or how does that work now at this point, now that the season's all done? How can, can Kyle guarantee anybody's coming back next year or anything like that? How does that work? He said that, he said to me, I would expect about 10 or 11 of our current players from the 2019 team to play for us next season, okay. which is gigantic. You think about that many guys coming back. We had, I think, six returnees this past year to get 10, 11, 12. Some of the names he threw out, he said, this guy's already requested. And we were pumped with a lot of those names. I mean, I was, I was fired up to know we'd have another year mm -hmm. of this player if they're allowed. The biggest thing that gets in the way of players returning to Wenatchee after playing the year, the year before, do they get a better summer ball offer? Do they get her? Is their coach shutting them down? Right. Because the best of the best go to the Cape Cod League. We understand and we respect that. If a guy wants to go there, we say, do it. <laughs> You're going to get way more exposure to scouts, and it's a really good look for you. So we have no problem with that. Sometimes people like to go to the Northwoods League. Sometimes their coaches prefer that, too. So that, those are both obstacles. Again, injuries, an obvious obstacle, rest, whatnot. So, you know, we'll wait and see. You know, Kyle pretty much will begin that in a couple weeks, though, because even though the season just ended, you want to hit these guys while they're still fresh. The memory of summer ball and, you know, having a fun year here, it just... I, I talked to a lot of our players this season. I asked them, especially if they were guys who had played here before, I said, how did this season compare? And a lot of them really enjoyed it. I, I mean, Dalton Heron was a guy who played mm -hmm. for us briefly in 2016. And he and went actually native, too. And I said to him, I said, well, what do you think of this year? He goes, night and day better than 2016. So for us, that's, that's gigantic to hear. Just to know that we've made those kind of improvements. And you know, we hope to get guys like that back who want to play here, who enjoy their time playing here. So... Kyle will be on the phone pretty soon here, so <laughs> you never know. It's, and it's a fun thing about summer balls. It was, my favorite thing that from this past year, besides the playoff game, was opening day, June 3rd, when I think we had four returnees in the lineup, and every time each of them came up for their first plate appearance, they just got like a really loud round of applause because people remembered them from the year before. We didn't have anything to really celebrate in 18. We didn't make the playoffs, but people just remembered them. They remembered the big moments they had, and they were happy to see them again. I'm going to be thrilled if we have, you know, 10 guys coming back and yeah. we can get, you know, a round of applause that whole game, you know, and that was just such a cool moment. And, but the fun thing is, like I said, is, you know, there was a lot of those guys back on June 3rd who fans didn't know mm -hmm. who kind of became fan favorites at the end of the year. So even if there are new players coming in, I always encourage fans, give them a chance. You might love them by the end of the summer. What, what kind of role does billet families play in all that? Because they say, I want to come back to Wenatchee only because I enjoyed it and I love the area mm -hmm. and I love the fans, but also I love the place where I called home or Two and a half months. That, oh, plays, a, that plays a huge role. Though. Absolutely. I, I talk to our players about that too because I, I always think, you know, this is my only chance to really get feedback from that because the off season is when we're talking to the host families, talking to the sponsors. So a lot in August, I was kind of like, I'm just going to ask the players. And a lot of them enjoyed their time so much with their host families. I remember our uh, starting pitcher for game three, uh, Gavin Gorell, his host parent, I, I forget, he's a local priest, but him and his family, they throw out the first pitch of that playoff game. And I'd never seen Gavin smile so much <laughs> that summer. He looked so thrilled to be out there catching that. It just these, these players form incredible bonds with their host parents. And it's so fun to see that happen because it's, a, it's an awkward situation. You know, sure. you're staying in a stranger's home for the summer, but... Host parents love it. They have a player to cheer for. They get to know them, and the players love it because it's it's a home away from home. So if you're interested in being a billet family for 2020, just give the Apple Sox a call or mm -hmm. send them an email or whatever. They're always, you know, uh, you may be put on a waiting list, but Marcy will get back to you. Info at applesox.com. There you go. Uh, you teased me before we went on the air about something special going on. Can you just... A little no, bit? We, that it's coming later. It's coming later. I can't tease it too much. It's something It's something we've had before. That's all I'm That's saying. all you're going to say? Yes. Okay. There you go. Joel Norman is the voice of the Apple Sox. Go Pirates. Let's go. I don't know what's going on with your team. Tank. Keep so. tank. I want a top 10 pick yeah, in the draft. Of course. <laughs>
My Yankees are doing just fine. Thank That's you very right. much. Of course, the Yankees are different because they're just that little engine that could, you know, a bunch, the of, payroll bunch too, of scrappy you know. little players just trying to cobble together a successful That's team. That's all it is. That's yeah. all my Yankee team yeah. is. Just a, just a bunch of The scrappy. bats have holes in them, so you, you just feel, uh, you feel impressed when the guy's hitting the ball. Joel's jealous. He's jealous. You're watching. Thanks for coming by, Joel. Listen, anytime you. you want to talk uh, hot stove, you just get a hold of me. Appreciate you it. You know where to find me. Uh, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back.